in my heart. I've been so excited to share this with you. I want you to turn to Isaiah 42. I want to start here. Um, this is a word that I have been carrying and stewarding and praying into. And I, I feel like we are reaching a tipping point in America. This is a culmination moment. Now, as you guys know from our journey, we have crisscrossed America back and forth. We have had every kind of, of, of resistance you can imagine that has come against us. And we have seen revival like never before. I mean, it's, it's been incredible. It's like people say, Sean, is it, is it the darkest times or the lightest times? And I always tell them both. <laughs> you know, uh, the darkness covers the face of the earth. The darkness covers people. But the glory of the Lord arises on you. And so it's a time of great darkness, but it's a time of great light. And there's a theme that I've been seeing, you know, as we've worshipped across America, as we've encountered, you know, I'm the number one COVID violator in 29 states, including Washington. I'm listed in the governor's th deal, you know, and Oregon. And, uh, and, and, you know, I am so, like, people, like, have their own opinions or whatever, the Pacific Northwest. I love this place. I grew up in Montana, guys. Y'all got to understand, this was the big city. This was the first place I remember coming out. My memories of coming here as a kid, you know, the first, you know, basketball game I ever went to, Supersonics. Lord, bring them back. Bring them back. Bring them back, God. We just call it in Jesus' name. Anyway. First baseball game, Mariners, football game. First time ever seeing skyscraper, Seattle. First ever, I mean, I grew up as a kid with my family walking the beaches, you know, of the Oregon coast and the Washington coast. Like, I fell in love with the beauty of this region. But not just that, I fell in love with God's divine plan of redemption. The enemy attacks regions that he's most scared of. He doesn't make counterfeit $1 bills. Y'all with me? And so I, I, have, I, am a, I am deeply committed. I want you to hear this. I have worshipped all up and down this state. I have worshipped from corner to corner, north to south, east to west. We have, we have climbed up mountains and sang the song of the Lord. Like I love God's heart over this region, but I want to preach this. I want to uh, read this. Isaiah 42, verse 10. This is where I want to start today. Sing to the Lord a new song. Someone say a new song. You know what a new song is? It's new. <laughs> Don't be those people that are like, why we got to sing a new song at church? Why we got to always sing a new song? Because the Bible commands us to. It's not like an option. Like it commands us 67 times. I don't have time to go through all those scriptures. It's a direct command. Sing a new song. Come up with something new of what God's done. Now, I love the songs from the 80s. Praise God. And I love all the old, and I love all the hymns, and I love it. But, but there is a new, see, this is a new season that demands a new sound. Sing a new song to the Lord. It's praise from the ends of the earth. You who go down to the sea and all that is in it. You who islands and all who live in them. Let the wilderness and its towns raise their voices. Verse 11. Let the settlements where Kedar lives rejoice. Let the people of Selah sing for joy. I love this because it's a prophetic word of the great end time worship movement and it will be known as a sound of joy. That's so one of the things, if any of you guys came to let us worship or especially if you came to the first one that we did in Chaz or Chop or whatever that place is called. Who came to that one? Anybody in here? A couple people. Okay, here's the thing. Great resistance, great intensity, great darkness, great joy. One of my favorite stories of that whole season was the number one famous viral uh, Antifa live streaming guy. He's in charge of all the live streams for YouTube and Facebook, millions of followers, and he, and he live streams all the craziness that's happening, and most of it was in Seattle and Portland. Well, he came up, and he came up with a bunch of antagonists that day, and all of a sudden, they didn't expect for thousands of Christians to show up. It was the autonomous zone, their territory, and all of a sudden, you got a bunch of crazy Christians 
that are like, actually, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And this is America, and we're going to worship right here. And so we did. And here's the crazy thing. So they tried to unplug our generator and attack us and did all this crazy shenanigans. At, at one point, the live stream guy climbs to the top there at the park, to the top of this, this structure, and goes live stream on the main Antifa channel. And he goes, I don't blankety blank get these people. What is wrong with these people? The more that we attack them, the more that we try to assault them, the more joyful they get. He ain't never seen nothing like it. This 2024 worship movement is a joyful one. It's one full of hope and optimism. It's not insecure. Let the people of Selah sing for joy. Let them shout from the mountaintops. Let them give glory to the Lord and proclaim his praise to the islands. The Lord will march out like a champion. Uh-oh. So you're telling me the culmination of all of this prayer and all of this worship and all of this sound brings forth the provoking of God to march out. And he marches out like a champion. Like a warrior, he will stir up his zeal. With a shout, he will raise the battle cry and triumph over his enemies. I would dare to say that as we've crisscrossed across America, as we've worshipped in 200 plus cities, what if 2024 is the year where the Lord marches out like a champion? And where he stirs up zeal in his body once again. Amen. I want to talk today about zeal for the house of the Lord. Turn to someone and say, zeal for the house of the Lord. The first time that we see zeal embodied in the Bible is a dude named Jehu. And he was wild. He was wild. Jehu was a wild man. Now let me talk about the context of when Jehu entered the scene. And while I'm doing that, you can go ahead and turn to 2 Kings 9. Jehu shows up on the scene in a season where Jezebel is reigning supreme. Jezebel is reigning supreme. She's inflicted fear on the land. Let me talk a little bit about Jezebel and the correlation to that season and the season that we're living in. Jezebel's ultimate goal is always control. Her marching orders are the destruction of the nuclear family. Now, when BLM first came out and they announced their whole thing in 2020, I was one of the first people to vocally make a stand on social media against them. And this is the reason I did it. I went to their website. I said, what are these guys all about? Oh, they want to destroy the nuclear family? Canceled. <laughs> And I went right out and I took a screenshot of their own website saying how they want to destroy the nuclear family. And I said, we're not standing for this. Whatever these guys want, I'm against. And I got so much heat. I mean, I got called every name in the book. I mean, it was insane. But I did it because I knew there was a Jezebel spirit that was operating that wanted to destroy the nuclear family. This is another sign of Jezebel. She announces her reign with the rise of feminism and toxic masculinity. I could go into this and I don't feel like I need to. There is a war against men like we've never seen before. That's the sign of a Jezebel time. She revels in the sexualization of children. The spirit attacks, dominates, manipulates those in authority, especially men. Her spell releases fear, flight, and panic. Those who fall prey to her tricks are often insecure and wounded. The Jezebel spirit is subtle and deceptive. Pride, independence, and rebellion are the fruit. Weak men abdicating their place of authority empower Jezebel to rule and reign. We have a situation like that in America. Weak men abdicating their place of authority empower Jezebel. She is typically in alignment with the religious spirit, and the families of people under Jezebel's influence are often dysfunctional and out of order. Here, let's throw up some statistics here. 
Jezebel Times, 43% of first marriages end in divorce. This is in America. 43% of children live without their father. One in five Gen Z identify as LGBTQ. The percentage of LGBTQ adults doubled over the last 10 years. You don't feel like we're in some indoctrination. Let me just tell you this. Every city we go to, we do an altar call for same-sex attraction and people battling this spirit. And you want to hear something? Every single time the altar is full. We feel it is our mandate to see people freed from this spirit. Amen? 90% of children 8 to 16 have viewed porn. 70% of men, 70 Percent of men ages 18 to 34 visit a porn site regularly. Every minute, $185,000 is spent on porn. Between 15,000 to 50,000 women and children in the U.S. are sold into sex trafficking each year. Sign of a Jezebel time. Estimated over 1 million trafficking victims in the U.S. right now. Let's talk about Gen Z. 91% of Gen Z's struggle is with mental health. 70% of Gen Z say anxiety and depression are significant problems among their peers. 42% of Gen Z diagnosed with mental health condition. 9% of homeschoolers have attempted suicide. High schoolers. Suicide is Gen Z's second leading cause of death. Gen Z homicides hit 25-year high during COVID, and the suicide rate was the worst in 50 years. I mean, guys, we are living in a culture of drugs, Sex, promiscuity, depression, and suicide. But can I give you some good news? You guys ready for good news? Come on. <laughs> You're like, ugh. Now let me give you some good news this morning on January 7th, 2024. The ruling of Jezebel demands the hour for the rising of Jehu. God has an answer. Turn to someone and say, God has an answer. So I want to study this for a minute this morning. Je Jehu, okay, who is Jehu? Well, let's read what good old Merriam-Webster's dictionary has to say. In the 17th century, English speakers began using Jehu as a generic term meaning coachman or specifically a fast or reckless coachman. <laughs> Today, we are more likely to use the word in reference to reckless cab drivers. The phrase, drives like Jehu, is encountered occasionally. Originally a commander of the chariots for Ahab, Jehu later led a revolt against the throne and became king himself. In the Bible, it is noted that Jehu, that he drives furiously. Or in the NIV, it says he drives like a madman. Anybody in this room ever driven with Pastor Russell? We got one survivor. Okay, I've been doing it for 14 years. It hasn't changed. My intercession levels rise. It's like every time I come to the Pacific Northwest and I get in a car with him, like the spirit of intercession comes on me. And I pray like I've never prayed before. He's crazy. No, no, really, he's actually crazy. And I don't know what kind of angelic forces the Lord has around his car. And I know this Kirkland campus, and he wants to go back and forth and all this sh craziness. And I'm like, well, maybe he's the guy that can do it. Because he drives like a madman. And there is something on this, in this season, where God is raising up people to ride across the nation like madmen. Possessing the spirit of God to dethrone Jezebel. Can I get an amen? amen? Second Kings chapter 9, it says, The prophet Elijah summoned a man. This is such a wild story. Please, you got to hear this. The prophet Elijah summoned a man from the company of the prophets, basically an intern. And he said to him, tuck your cloak into your belt, take this flask of oil with you, and go to Ramoth Gilead. When you get there, look for Jehu, son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nemishi. Go to him, get him away from his companions, take him into an inner room, then take the flask of oil, pour it on his head, and declare, this is what the Lord says, I anoint you king over Israel, then open the door and run. 
This is so bizarre. Elijah's just hanging out with this crew, and he says, listen, I got a job. Who's ready? This one's kind of wild. Okay, I need you to take some oil. I need you to go run down, find this guy Jehu, anoint him king over the whole nation, and then run out the back door. Like, don't give him time to negotiate. <laughs> don't give him time to ask questions. Just, just do it and then bail. And so, <laughs> and so it says, so the young prophet went to Ramoth Gilead. When he arrived, he found the army of officers sitting together. I have a message for you, commander. For which of us? Asked Jehu. Now, why did he say for which of us? Because they were all of equal rank. This is very important to the story. He says, I have a message for you commanders. And they, all, they go, we're all commanders. We're all the same rank. Which are you referring to? And then he says, for you commander. Jehu got up, went into the house, and the prophet poured oil on Jehu's head and declared, this is what the Lord says, the God of Israel, I know you king over the Lord's people. You are to destroy the house of Ahab, your master, and I will avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the Lord's servants shed by Jezebel. Then he opened the door and ran. Verse 11, when Jehu went out to his fellow officers, one of them asked him, is everything all right? Why did this maniac come to you? This is how Jehu responded. You know the man and the sort of things he says. He just gets downloaded the greatest prophetic mandate of his life. And it comes in the wildest fashion. I want you guys to hear this this morning. And instead of sharing and instead of believing it, he sinks into self-doubt, false humility. If it wasn't for his company of friends, it would have never come to pass. Show me your friends, I'll show you your future. You know why I'm here standing on this stage? January 7th. I got a crazy life and four kids and a lot going on. I heard the word that God gave that a campus opened in Kirkland. I heard the prophetic history and I said, Russell, I'm coming up. I'm with you. Take the land. Take the land. Take the inheritance. Some of you need to get new friends. This is the year in 2024. God is saying, find a group of commanders that believe in the word of the Lord over your life. Jehu says, you know the man and the sort of thing he says. His friends said, that's not true. Tell us. They just called him out on the spot. That's what good friends do. They said, you're a liar. Shut up. What did he say? Sometimes that's, the, sometimes that's the best friends that call out your own. Yeah, exactly. You said it. And so they said, tell us the word. Jehu said, all right, here's what he told me. You know, you can picture him. He's crazy, guys. I don't know. He's like some intern from Elijah and whatever. He said, I was going to be king over Israel. Immediately, every commander dropped their cloak, spread them under him on bare steps, and they blew the trumpet and shouted, Jehu is king. His friends caught the, the mandate and the anointing over his life and came into agreement with the sound of the Lord and called it as it should be. And it wasn't just Jehu's future that was at stake. It was the future of the nation that was under the grip of Jezebel. Can I tell you this, friends? What is the result of you, you being unable or unwilling to step in your prophetic calling? I look at 2020 and I see... Hundreds of thousands of people saved, healed, delivered. I walked up to a dude that was about to blow his brains out in Dalton, Georgia. And all of a sudden we started sound check. 
and he put the gun down. He was so depressed from the lockdowns and COVID and on drugs and all this stuff. And pretty soon by the end of that day, he was at the altar giving his life to Jesus. And at the end, he got baptized. And then he got plugged into a church. And he's still thriving today. That's one story out of a million. I had a couple in the last service that came up to me from this church. She came in 2022 to our event in Snohomish in the field. Y'all are crazy in that field. She said, my husband's not here. He left us. He's with, huddled with her kids. Can you pray with me? Can you believe? And I prayed with her and I said, God's going to bring him home. That night, he just told me out in the lobby, he was drunk. And he woke up and something happened in his spirit. He said, I don't even know what it was. And I said, I can't drink anymore. I got to get back with my family. And I just met them. They're together now, back as a family. But in 2020, I battled this same thing, the insecurity and the slander and the accusation and the people that came against us and the misunderstandings. And if I didn't have people in my corner saying, no, Sean, you're called to run. You're called to ride across America. This is the word of the Lord over your life. If I didn't have those people, all of those testimonies may never have happened. Some of you guys are like, well, I don't want to think too high. It ain't even about you. Get over yourself. It's about the destiny of the nations. It's about the breakthrough God wants to use you for. So it says, Jehu, reluctantly, <laughs> took on this role, and he started doing what he does. He started driving like a maniac. Verse 20, 2 Kings 9, it says, the lookout reported he has reached them, but he isn't coming back either. The driving is like the son of, like Jehu, son of Namishi. He drives like a maniac. After he dethroned Jezebel, after he killed the Ahab lineage after he could fulfill the word of the Lord. It says in verse 15, 10 verse 15, if so, Jehu, give me your hand. So he did. Jehu helped him into the chariot. And Jehu said in verse 16, come with me and see my zeal for the Lord. There would be another that would come with the zeal even greater than Jehu. Turn to John chapter 2. From Jehu to Jesus. Jesus comes on the scene after 33 years of silence. <laughs> He's like, 33 years. He's the son of God walking the earth. 30 years. Not eager to get into ministry. Knows who he is as a son of God. He's 30 years old. Probably had a lot of ministry opportunities, don't you think? But he had one thing in his mind to do, to kick off his earthly ministry. The only person that derailed it was his mom. You know, because his mom came to him and said, hey, I know it's probably not your ideal first miracle, but we got some, we ran out of wine. <laughs> only a mom could manipulate God. That's my Mother's Day sermon. I'll be back to preach that. <laughs> you guys are laughing, but read the story. The Bible says that Jesus told his mom, it's not my time. God told his mom, it's not my time. Mom told God, I'll tell you when it's your time. <laughs> it's such a wild story. <laughs> But in John chapter 2, after that happens, Jesus, immediately after that, verse 13, says, When it was Thomas' time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem in the temple courts. He found cattle, sheep, doves, and others sitting at the tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords. Okay, research when you get home today how long it takes to make a whip out of cords. 
This whole like, like Jesus is holding a lamb and he looks feminine and he's stroking the lamb and he's just so nice. That's not his entry point to ministry. He looked like a maniac. He fashioned a weapon. My Jesus? Yeah, you're Jesus. He sat on the side of the road taking hours to intentionally weave a cord of whips. And as he walked into the temple, I promise you this, my friends, people were injured. No. He's walking in with a whip. He's snapping people. He's pushing over tables. It's just panic. It's just craziness, right? And it says, what drove him to do this? To those who sold doves, he said, get out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples remembered. His disciples are watching this. And they're, they're, they, they've studied for years the Torah. They've studied for years the book of Psalms. And they look at Jesus and they go, we know what's happening. This is Psalm 69, 9. For zeal for your house consumes me. And the insults of those who insult you fall on me. And in that moment, the disciples for the first time saw what the zeal of the Lord looked like in a New Testament era. Jesus said there must be a course correction to the house of God. Can I tell you in America, we need a course correction. And it begins with God injecting us with fresh zeal for his house. I want to invite you to stand up today. I believe this year is going to be a year where we see passion like never before. The media is going to ramp up their games. The corruption is going to ramp up. The sexualization is going to ramp up. We got elections. It's about to get crazy. But you know what? Our passion, our zeal, our hunger, our fire is going to go to a level that we've never experienced. Some of you guys may seem docile in your faith, but I'm telling you, you're about to get wild. You're going to get passionate for the house of the Lord. You're going to get passionate for the things of the Lord. You're going to get passionate for the word again. You're going to grow in the fire of your heart again for the things of God. And I believe judgment begins in the house of the Lord. First Peter says that. We're seeing that across America right now. Things are getting exposed in the church. Leaders are being exposed. Praise God! We need it even more. Like David said, see if there be any wicked way in me. And I want to I invite you right now, if you're here and you're like, you know what? 2024, I want to ride like Jehu. I want to carry zeal for the house of God. In my season today, I want to carry this. And I got stuff in my life I got to get rid of. It could be bad friends. Seriously, some of you guys need to change your friendship structure. Your friends are lame. <laughs> I was going to say turn to someone, but don't do that. <laughs> Some of your friends are so lame. And you know it. You got to get rid of them. Some relationships, cut them off. We don't got time for games anymore. Some of you are, are playing with addictions and kind of playing and just kind of compromising. Get over it. We have no room for that anymore. We need the body of Christ. We need everybody stepping in to their prophetic promise over their life. We need every single person stepping into that Jehu anointing. And maybe I'm the crazy cowboy from Montana that came to remind you of the word over your life. Come on, if you're here and you're just like, man, I want to shed some stuff off in this season. I want you to come down here. I want to pray for you. Before we end today, if that's you, could be friends, could be addiction, could be confusion. It could just be your own, like, you haven't believed in those words. God's given them to you, and you shelved them. Can I tell you, today's a day of activation. Today's a day of activation. Today's a day where God lights the fire again. Come on, I know there's more than this. 
I'm telling you, this is a turnaround season. This is a turnaround season for families. This is a season of reconnection. This is a season where the things that have held you back, the things that have held you down, the things that have weighed you down, it's like David, he was had this calling to take out Goliath, but before he went to the enemy lines, he had to lay down his baggage that he was carrying. Lay down your baggage on January 7th. Lay it down. You're not meant to carry that into the new season. Come on, I want you guys out there, just extend your hands down here. Come on, let's just begin to pray. Lord, we ask you, Today, at Pursuit, we ask you January 7th, God, release the zeal for your house on every person here. Lord, we pray, God, that you would break off all doubt, all discouragement, all fear, all insecurity. Lord, we pray for the removal of the things that have, that, that have inhibited us, Lord, that have distracted us. Lord, let this be a year. I, I just feel in my spirit like some of you guys are going to go home like a raging bull and you're going to just start removing stuff out of your house. I see some of you guys taking, I saw this picture this morning, taking TVs off the wall taking screens away from your life, taking anything that would distract you. And I'm not religious. I, I'm, shoot, I'm going to watch the championship game tomorrow. I, but I'm saying there are things that have become an idol and a place of distraction. Get rid of them. There's too much at stake. There's too much at stake. And guess what? Like I said before, it's not even about you. It's about how God wants to use your life to change the world. Lord, we pray right now, God, let today be a day where you ignite zeal in your bride, where you ignite passion, where you ignite a fire. Lord, I pray, God, that, that you would release <laughs> a Jehu maniac driver anointing <laughs> that would cause people to run after the things of your heart not caring what people think, not caring what people say, not caring what people, what, not caring about any opinions of man. Lord, they are driven by the fear of the Lord. We break off everything that's hindered. I thank you, Jesus, that this is gonna be a year of air superiority. This is going to be a year where we soar. This is what I want you to do. Just even those out there, those here, just lay a hand on the person next to you. Come on, out there and here. We're going to do a group impartation. And then I'm going to ride like Jehu to Kirkland. I'm really going to have to ride like Jehu, but it's going to be great. I just want you to pray zeal, fresh zeal. Come on. Oh, the person on your right and your left. Come on, pray for it. Zeal for the house. Come on, zeal for the house of the Lord. Zeal for the house of the Lord. Come on, pray, pray, pray. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice. Come on, all over this place. Zeal for your house. Zeal for your house. Let it consume me. Let it consume me. Let it consume my thoughts, my emotions, my family. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. A course correction for the church. A course correction for families. A course correction for marriages. A course correction for sons and daughters. We say this is the year of the return of families to healthiness. This is the year of the return of marriages to love. This is the year, God, where you're restoring everything the enemy stolen. This is the year where we're getting it all back. This is the year where we're gonna crush the head of the serpent. This is the year where we're gonna ride across the Pacific Northwest in our nation, carrying a fire and a passion and a zeal. All right, on the count of three, I just want us to release a shout. And I don't want this, this is not like a churchy shout or like a Husky shout or like a Seahawks shout or like, you know, whatever. 
I want us to release a shout. And I believe in even as we shout, it's something's gonna come unshackled. I was thinking of <laughs> shameless plug. Like we created these new shirts that, it's like, I feel like we, we created these for my eight year old boys, you know? Like the aggression, <laughs> like this, ah, we gotta have you, God. I wanna release a shout and we're carrying this shout just so you know, so you can be praying for us. We're going to 23 capitals and then we're culminating on the National Mall in Washington, D.C. nine days before the election. <laughs> Pray for us. The last, the last few cities are going to be Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Phoenix, Arizona, Atlanta, Georgia, Michigan, Raleigh. I mean, we're going to every single swing state very last yes there's a purpose behind that we need things to shift in America so on the count of three I want to release a shout and then we're going to go out of here and ride like Jehu alright are you ready are you ready come on let's, let's hold hands together let's do this like, like we do in let us worship we lift up our hands and we shout together let's release the sound this morning on three one two three give a shout Lord, we pray zeal for your house. Let it consume us. Let it change us and let it lead us forward into a new day. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. I'm going to run down and celebrate. You're welcome to join us in Kirkland. There's books and stuff in the back. God bless you. Someone shout zeal. <laughs>